Afternoon, gang. Yep, the rare mid-afternoon video out of me. Running around picking vegetables because it seemed what I'm picking. I got another basket full of it today. So it was a lot of making salsa this afternoon. That's what I'm in the middle of doing right now. And as the canner cools, I thought I'd tell you what else is going on here. So, as I said in the title, are we a democracy, a constitutional republic, or a banana republic? Well, for the last year or so, maybe two, we've been listening to everybody from the liberal hive mind saying, our democracy is about to fail, blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, you get Washington, D.C.'s most well-known wino coming out today saying that if Donald Trump is electric, elected in 2024, the United States will cease to exist. I hate to tell you this, Nancy, the United States failed to exist the day Barry Hussein was inaugurated and Trump tried to put it all back together. And then, of course, we have Potato Joe, who is destroying the unification of 50 states very well by himself. Okay. But so are we a democracy, a constitutional republic, or a banana republic? And that's what Ohio is going to decide today. All right. Issue one, which is on the ballot today, polls opened at 6.30 this morning. They're open till 7.30 tonight will decide in the state of Ohio whether or not it's mob rule in the state or whether the people actually have a say in the matter. Okay, I'm going to give you the definition of what the three that I'm asking about. In a democracy, the general public has the highest power. The voting majority directly makes the laws with the rights of the mi minority receiving little or no protection. As many of you have said before, this is like two wolves and a sheep deciding on what's for dinner. Okay, That's what a democracy is. Hate to tell you this, Nancy, the United States has never been a democracy and never, hopefully, will be. Okay. In a constitutional republic, the Constitution is the highest power. In a constitutional republic, the Republic's Constitution, no, I'm not trying to play Kamala Harris here, particularly safeguards the rights of the minority against the majority's will, and laws are made by representatives chosen by the people in accordance with the Constitution. That's the way the United States was founded. Okay. A banana republic is a country with an economy of state capitalism, whereby the country is operated by a private commercial enterprise for the exclusive profit of the ruling class. That's what Nancy wants us to be. That's what Joe wants us to be. Okay, That ain't where we're going. This is what's on the ballot today. Okay, Issue number one would change the laws effective immediately in Ohio to state that 60% of the people would have to uh, would have to agree to change to add a constitutional amendment instead of a simple majority so in other words you'd have to have three wolves and two sheep deciding what's for dinner okay as opposed to two and one it would also require citizens who want to place an amendment on the ballot to collect signatures from at least 5% of the voters on the last gubernatorial uh, election in all 88 counties instead of the current 44. Okay, Which, why is this important? Well, like every other state, these cities are overwhelmingly Democrat. So Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Columbus... They don't worry about the collar counties. They don't worry about the rural counties, which two-thirds of Utah or Utah, Ohio is rural. Okay, They don't need to worry about getting those people as long as they can get enough in the big cities and the immediate suburbs there around. Okay, It would also eliminate a 10-day cure period 
that allows citizens to replace any signatures deemed faulty by the Secretary of State's office. Okay. Now, why this is interesting? Because right now, the laws and the books in Ohio state that they're a democracy. 50.000000, however many O's you want, one, can change the percentage of people, can change the Utah, or why do I keep saying Utah? Ohio Constitution. Okay. The Democrats are pushing this hard because they want to uh, allow abortions up to birth and probably thereafter, you know, infanticide uh, in Ohio. And there's a bunch of people that are going, no, we don't want that. And we don't want 50.000001% of the people to make, it, uh, to make this possible. Now, I'm going to give you this as an idea, okay? These are the groups that oppose issue one, that want to keep it at 50.0001, okay? The Ohio Democrat Party, the League of Women Voters, Planned Parenthood, the Ohio Education Association, the Democrats, Democratic Socialists of Ohio, the ACLU of Ohio, they all want to keep it at 50.01% of the vote to change the laws. Okay. Here's the big caveat to that one. Each one of those groups in their bylaws requires 60% of their membership to change the bylaws. So all those groups that want it to be 50% to change the Constitution in the state of Ohio want it to only be 50%, or I'm sorry, the want, the want to keep it at 50% to change the Constitution of the state of Ohio require their own organization to have 60% of the vote to change their bylaws. Do you want any better example of rules for thee and not for me? This is what's on the ballot today. This is the first volley of what's going to happen in 2024. This will tell us everything we need to know about whether Ohio and probably give us a good snapshot of what the overall general public thinks of the communist regime that is the Biden administration and Madam Communist herself, Nancy Pelosi, who thinks that the world is coming to an end if Donald Trump is reelected. I hope Trump is reelected. He might, he might not be. But all I know is this, any I don't care if it's your state representative, your congressman, your mayor, your city dog catcher, or the president, that gets elected in 2024, who is a Democrat, is an enemy of the state. Pinball out.